Okay, welcome back at uh, Yakaima TV. Today we are in the recycling and uh, of, of plastics, and I'm talking with Christine Levesque. She is director by business innovation at Suez, uh, and uh, she's going to explain what, what, what how our vision, what they're doing in, in the company in Suez uh, on on recycling and packaging design and chemical recycling. So, Christine, thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Peter. And uh, I would love to hear your vision and your activities. So please share your screen and your information with us. All right. So. Yeah. Now the presentation mode. Yes. Okay. So actually, uh, designing plastics packaging that uh, you and me, we buy uh, off the shelf in the supermarket every day is one of the key elements to reach uh, the circularity of plastics mm. in Europe and beyond. Um, once upon a time, I, was, I used to be a young engineer a while ago, and uh, I had one of my, my bosses during an investment committee where I was uh, fiercely defending a disruptive technology for uh, reprocessing uh, mixed uh, waste. Uh, he told me, but you know, Christine, uh, uh, whatever the technology, there is a universal rule on earth that uh, shit in, shit out. Yeah. So uh, whatever you invent, uh, that's the second law of thermodynamic, that uh, nothing is created and nothing is lost, everything is transformed. And so in order for your business case to fly, you need quality feedstock. Yeah. And that's why at Suez, we have been so intensively busy together with the value chain of plastics packaging. Mm -hmm. And to remind you, uh, uh, plastics in packaging represent 40% of uh, all the plastics being produced worldwide. So mm -hmm. that's the main uh, application segment for, for plastics polymer. Uh, so far, uh, um, and, 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 and so, uh, I would say far more than in automotive or even in building and construction sector. Mm -hmm. So we have focused together with the value chain of packaging to, um, to set standards and guidelines so that a designer of uh, packaging today can really aim at uh, designing its packaging, having in mind uh, how it will be recycled. Yeah. Yeah. And, these, and these guidelines have been made uh, having in mind the uh, current infrastructure we have in Europe for recycling those plastics packaging. And this is mainly an infrastructure of what we call mechanical recycling plants. Mm -hmm. And what I would like to, to address here is uh, whether when chemical recycling plants will come online, uh, whether they still need uh, this type of, uh, of, uh, of design for recycling guidelines and designed packaging. Okay. Yeah. Um, as Suez, we are, if you, if you look here, you have actually the, the, Mobile sorry, phone. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> <laughs> you have actually, uh, the, the, the circular, uh, the circular economy of a plastics packaging. If, if you and me, we are here consuming, uh, consuming a, a packaged product, mm -hmm. uh, we throw, uh, the, the, the packaging once we have used the product and here comes Suez. My company is actually a company collecting waste. We are known by the, by the trucks uh, driving yeah. on the road mainly, uh, and we are present on five continents, not a small company. Mm -hmm. And that's the emerged part of the iceberg. But at Suez, uh, after that the trucks have uh, driven to our uh, uh, transfer sites, mm -hmm. we do operate a wide network of industrial sites uh, that are in the case of packaging, sorting those packaging by polymers, and then reprocessing those packaging yeah. in the extrusion lines and so forth. And we have uh, uh, um, also lately married with uh, uh, Lionel Basel, producer of uh, uh, polypropylene and polyethylene in a joint venture, where we both of us have married to produce high quality recycled polypropylene and polyethylene. Yep. And so that's us. In a, and uh, the four essential steps when you talk about recycling is actually not only the step where you will remelt uh, uh, the, the, the polymer and re-extrude it in a granule, which is basically everybody called that the recycling step. But actually the recycling is made out of four steps. You need to collect the packaging, otherwise 
it yeah. won't never be recycled. You need you need the sorting machine to recognize this packaging and uh, eject it in the in the right box. And then you go into the reprocessing steps where it, it has to be reprocessable into a granule. And last but not least, uh, it has to be reused yeah. in replacement of virgin plastic. So that's the four important elements. So um, collection is key. Otherwise, we are all working for nothing, designing very nice packaging, but uh, if yeah. they are not collecting, they're polluting our environment. And if I take typical example of a pouch, you know, uh, everybody knows such a pouch we use. Uh, and this pouch, classically, uh, some of them are being re redesigned now with one polymer, but classically you have two polymers. Mm -hmm. You have two layers, one of PET and one of PE. And, uh, and what will happen with this, with this pouch is that it will reach, when it's collected in North Europe, uh, uh, it will reach a sorting, packaging sorting plant yeah. with several equipments, it will go through, and it will end in one of these sorted streams. Yeah. And what you see there will be the feedstock of the reprocessing plant. Mm -hmm. Today, it goes to a mechanical recycling plant, tomorrow to a chemical recycling plant. Yeah. The pouch we are talking about I, and actually, in these reprocessing plants, the aim is to, to uh, uh, re-extrude into this granule. Yeah. And this granule replaces virgin plastic, and you can make again uh, a project. If you come back to the pouch we, we are, we are uh, following, um, basically, you can recycle it uh, uh, when, when it's uh, into, into a bench, an urban furniture bench. And this, this is calling for, for uh, uh, technologies where you can afford uh, having a bit of PET, which will not smelt at the same temperature as polyethylene. So mm -hmm. if you look at such an urban furniture, you will see some pigments of unsmolted uh, resins and so forth. So it's growth recycling but you will not actually uh, uh, circularize the molecule of uh, plastics. It won't replace virgin plastics. So the aim uh, that, that we pursue at Suez is really that it's turning around and making, uh, uh, and from a plastics uh, uh, used in a packaging, you make again a plastics good to be used in a pla yeah. in packaging. And, um, and so in the case of the pouch, classically, uh, it is not reaching uh, uh, the, this, this granule because the fact that it is composed of two layers of different polymers, if you really uh, uh, want to have a packaging to packaging application, you will get it in your rejects because mm -hmm. what you want as a reprocessor, mechanical reprocessor, you want only PET or you want only PE. Yeah. If you have both, forget. Yeah. Um, so this is what uh, a recyclable packaging is, the four steps uh, we talked already. Uh, the two first steps are concerning the whole packaging and the last two are uh, concerning the materials that uh, yep. compose the packaging. If we go now into uh, chemical recycling, mm. um, this looks complicated, but it is not. It is, uh, uh, if you can follow me for a minute, uh, how do we produce uh, uh, virgin plastics? Uh, everything begins with crude oil. Uh, you get refined uh, hydrocarbon, for example, nafta. Yeah. And you will from there uh, uh, go into uh, monomers, producing monomers and intermediates. Uh, from there, you go to polymers. And from polymers, you are having uh, plastics uh, products, uh, uh, plastics-based products that are being used in their function. Mm -hmm. and then eventually become waste. And the routes to close the, close the loop and reuse the plastics are multiple. As you can see, reuse is the, is the shortest and the most efficient one, if possible. Yeah. Yeah. Then you go into mechanical recycling. Then you go into what we call physical chem chemical recycling. When you go back, you still, you still keep the polymer structure of your feedstock. Mm -hmm. And starting from uh, this uh, uh, depolymerization here, that's the route where you will begin to, um, to process your polymeric structure to depolymerize it into monomer again. Yeah. Or uh, eventually really to crack it down to oil again. And yeah. that's the, 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 the two last ones here. Uh, basically, what, what if I was an innovator listening to this, uh, to this capsule, I, I would say, remind yourself that we talk a lot about chemical recycling, but this is addressing completely different uh, technologies and also different feedstock 
of, mm. uh, of uh, polymers. We all the time, we talk about plastics as if it was an homogeneous material. But you have hundreds of different uh, polymers and they need to follow different rules. Yeah. Um, and as soon as we, we, we have this experience and we do not communicate a lot about it, actually, mm -hmm. so it's a kind of a, uh, of a premiere to have it on a, on a, on a capsule here. Yeah. Uh, we have a, a pilot uh, pyrolysis plant that uh, in the UK, nearby Bristol, uh, that was uh, commissioned years ago. I, uh, I wouldn't say I was young, but uh, I was younger than I am now. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a capacity of pyrolysis plant of a capacity of one ton per hour. Yeah. And the business model we had at that time was very simple. We had sorting la lines and we were actually sorting out everything which was monopolymer mm -hmm. and all these mixed plastics that was escaping our machine and not being able to be mechanically processed, we sent it to this pilot. But as I am uh, indicating here, uh, actually, we, we noticed that the, the, the process was quite sensitive to uh, the quality of the feedstock. Yeah. Uh, if we had PVC into it, if we, if we had PET with the oxygen molecule into it, uh, it was really uh, at least disturbing and at worst completely blocking the, the, the process. Yeah. So again, my message is uh, uh, when, and I'm really looking forward to have uh, Europe uh, investing a lot more than we do today in recycling, but when this day comes, all the, the guidelines that we do right now for the actual infrastructure of mechanical recycling plants, they remain absolutely valid for chemical recycling plants. If you, have, if you are the designer of a packaging, first rule is try so far as possible to use one polymer, Mm -hmm. to use as less possible of this, uh, of this uh, barrier elements, uh, EVOH, uh, uh, CEOX, and all the kind of additives you put to increase the functionalities of your packaging. Yeah. Uh, so try to stick to these good old rules because it will also affect the way the chemical recycling plant uh, uh, function. Okay. Well, one question about the designer. If you talk, what do you mean exactly with the designer? I mean, is that the let's say the designer who designs the packaging, the, how it's how it looks like, or is it the the, the designer, let's say the engineering uh, designer, so to speak? It's um, I don't know what difference you made. It's it's the person. It's not the person who, who is deciding. It's the person who is deciding about uh, the colors, the look of the packaging, uh, and it's always when you when you go into the fast moving consumer goods, for example. Uh, uh, to my knowledge, it's always a duo between a packaging engineer and a, and a, and a marketing designer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, okay. That, then then it's then it's clear. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Peter, I guess that's it. So this is the, the, the oil we do in, uh, in Bristol. Mm -hmm. And I have, uh, I have made the last slide for uh, those uh, uh, listening to us to actually wrap up a bit the advantage of chemical recycling and the challenge of it. And we, we may elaborate during the conference in November, of course. Yes, exactly. Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, you gave a, um, a good, let's say, introduction in chemical recycling and how you look at it. Um, it's for a non-chemical engineer sometimes not always easy to understand exactly how the, those processes work, but now it's for me to clear. Um, so the essence is that you say, if you talk about packaging, that you should think about the design and that's basically, that, so and go for one polymer instead of several polymers or all sorts of addition, additions. Uh, that's the essence, isn't it? Indeed, indeed, it's uh, it's uh, one thing which I I learned also once upon a time. By the way, I'm not a chemical engineer; I'm a mechanical engineer. Okay. And uh, and uh, uh, we we all the time we talk. My 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 children talk about plastics, how bad plastics are, and plastics, plastics, as, as if it was one material. Mm. But they are absolutely not. Uh, unfortunately, it's it's really complex. You need to to go back to polymer per polymer, and the most known ones in the consumer industry. You have the PET, that's the number one yeah. uh, uh, that you see on, on bottles. You have the the polyethylene, which mm. is the, typically the your shampoo bottle, uh, detergent bottle. Yeah. You have the polypropylene, which is your ice cream box in yeah. the fridge. Yeah. Okay. And we started, before we started the interview, we talked a bit about regulation and, and things. Uh, and you say that it's important to have that in, in, in Europe or globally, obviously, but it's starting in Europe. 
so the first steps are being taken there. But what? How important is it uh, for you? For your uh, it's a question of survival of the whole industry uh, and the whole business model of making the molecule circular, okay. because unfortunately, uh, the the price of the virgin polymer mm -hmm. that that we are actually gradually substituting by uh, uh, by by making the polymer turn around instead of uh, extracting uh, from uh, from uh, naphtha and crude oil uh, new polymers, it is intrinsically uh, uh, costly processes even with mechanical recycling, yeah. and we are not competitive with the low virgin prices of, uh, of polymers today. Okay. Today, but also in coming years, there is a, a huge uh, production capacity, for example, of polyolefin being installed worldwide and uh, with uh, production costs that are far lower than the one uh, we, we have in the, in the recycling uh, industry. So without regulation, uh, uh, it's very simple. I would be a packaging designer and I have the choice between buying a granule from Suez, uh, which is more expensive than the virgin granule. Yeah. And of course, uh, uh, it's, it's almost as good as, but uh, uh, it is a recycled granule, right? Yeah. And it is more expensive. If yeah. I am not obliged, I will not do it. Yeah. Or, or, and that, that's the, the, uh, some, some champions, uh, uh, and luckily they exist, yeah. some, uh, some champions in the, in the consumer good industries, they uh, are uh, internalizing these costs because they want to aim for sustainability. And they also uh, think that they're, they're, this is for them the way to go. And they internalize this over cost. So they, they, they purchase uh, at higher price than, uh, than Virgin, luckily. Otherwise, we would have closed plants already. Okay. 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 But, but are you positive about the regulation? Do you think that the European Commission or European Union will, will do this uh, more actively? Or? Um, I, I guess so. Yes, they did already for one type of application where they have actually for the uh, PET beverage bottle mm -hmm. uh, required that by 2025, all the beverage bottles being put on the market, uh, and this is mostly PET, water bottles must contain 25% of recycled contents. Okay. So this is allowing the, the, the recycling industry to actually uh, live in a competitive field, yeah. but, uh, but in a level playing field uh, decoupled from the virgin price. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your, uh, your explanation and your, uh, your in-depth uh, information about chemical recycling. Um, as always, I ask at the end of an interview or a presentation a personal question. Uh, I mean, you're a professional, you're, you're presented everything in the very, in, on, on your profession and on your, your industry, but I'm always intrigued to find out a bit about the person behind that. So, and particularly about what is your favorite music or food or city or, 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 or animal or, or and, and sometimes I ask passion, but some people don't think well, what is your passion. But anyway, so I'm, I'm curious, curious to learn from you. Hmm. I have lots of patience for those of, uh, for those knowing me, um, besides plastics, uh, recycling, uh, <laughs> I'm, a, I actually, I'm, a, I love a good glass of single malt whiskey. Uh -huh. And okay. uh, yeah. so I'm, I'm a whiskey lover, but not the, the really the luxurious uh, ones. So uh, uh, and uh, and also in reasonable quantities, right? <laughs> and what I what I really like to do in uh, in my private life is to to cook for uh, large tables of friends and just reinvent the world with uh, good wine, good foods, and uh, enjoying life. Okay, well that sounds very, let's say. Uh... A French type of lifestyle, I guess. Oh, I'm Belgian. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, but I didn't. I did, well, the Belgium as well. True. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I hope I hope there are other Europeans uh, doing like me. <laughs> right. Italians, Spanish, and there are even some Dutch who do this, but uh, not not. I mean, there is a difference in lifestyle. So anyway, thank you very much for your presentation. Look forward to see you, uh, see and, and meet you also at our conference in November. So thank I you. I look for forward to it. <laughs>